Hey, if you've been on the fence about moving to Henderson here in Nevada, maybe what you need is to go through the pros and cons and weigh up and see if it's gonna work for you. That's what I did when I moved here. Luckily, I managed to see more pros than cons. I'm gonna break them down for you in this video and at the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of if Henderson's gonna work for you and maybe being excited about it or maybe rule it out. And I always say that's just as important. And I'm gonna start right now. So I'm gonna start with the pros. One of the first pros for me is does, Henderson is actually a city. Let's, let's just get that out there first. Henderson is a city. A lot of people confuse it and compare it with Summerlin and Summerlin is a gorgeous master planned community but Henderson is a separate city and one of the big pros about living in Henderson is there's just so many different communities, so many great communities in Henderson. You've got Green Valley which is one of the oldest master planned communities and then within Green Valley it's separated into Green Valley North, Green Valley South, Green Valley Ranch. At the moment, we live in Green Valley North and we love it here, although we are thinking about moving to Inspirada. There's nothing wrong with Green Valley at all. It's very well connected, very central. So Green Valley in itself is a great community. You've got the district here as well. Then you've got Seven Hills, which is another, another gorgeous community built around the uh, Rio Seco Golf Course, some great hills, some great sunsets that you get to see in Seven Hills as well, named after the Seven Hills of Rome. You've got Anthem, which is really a you know, fabulous community, a gorgeous luxury community. You've got Inspirada, as I've said already, which is a fantastic growing community. Everything is up there now, really, compared to when it first started. It was you know, quite, quite hard and felt quite stranded. Now they're building so much in that West Henderson area. You've got McDonald's Highland, McDonald's Ranch, which are two premier communities here in Henderson. You've got Cadence over the east side of Henderson. You've got Whitney Ranch. You've got um, all the downtown Henderson area as well, just next to Cadence. So there's just a great mixture of different types of communities. And I think whatever you're looking for in a community, then you're definitely going to be able to find it in Henderson, whether you want no HOA, whether you want gated, guard gated, whether you want amenities, whatever it is you're looking for in a community, I think you're going to find it in Henderson. And that's why it's always important to reach out however you're comfortable, whenever you're ready, because by t having a conversation with you and knowing what you look for in a community, what's important to you, I'll be able to pinpoint some of those communities. And then when you come here to have a discovery tour, or if you need me, I can do a drive by of those communities and show you what they actually look like. But it's always important to reach out and have those conversations. And then that way, you know, as I said, I can pinpoint several different communities that are gonna work for you. And Henderson is full of great communities. The next pro for me, and it's one of the things that really spoke to me when I was looking at moving here, definitely as a parent it spoke to me, but even if I wasn't a parent, it would speak to me as well. And that was Henderson is constantly ranked as one of the safest, largest cities in the whole of the US. Actually constantly ranked number two or three cities in the whole of the US, and that you know is music to my ears. But obviously before I moved here, I had a, an opinion of Las Vegas and the strip and the trouble and you know, all the antisocial stuff that goes on, but actually living in Henderson, and also to be fair, living in parts of Vegas as well, but living in Henderson feels a world away from that. Obviously, we don't see a lot of the undesirable things that you would see in other parts of Vegas, and I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that, but I'm sure you'll get the gist of what I mean. And if you were to look at crime stats in general across Las Vegas and Henderson, you know, in fact, across Clark County as a whole, you'll see most of it is actually gonna probably be around the strip and downtown areas. And that's no surprise, that's where most people are. That's where a lot of people are drunk. There's a lot of tourists and people doing things they probably wouldn't do if they were sober. So that's where a lot of the crime is gonna be. And then there's gonna be other crime dotted around the whole of the Las Vegas area. But if you look at those crime stats and if you need more direction on that, then definitely again, do reach out to me. If you need more direction on crime stats though, I'll, I'll happily help you. But if you can do it on your own, look it up, you'll see where the crime is. Henderson will still have crime, but as I said, it's always ranked as a safe city. And I'm going to be honest, it does feel, living in Henderson the last over three years now, it definitely feels like a safe city. There are going to be things that happen though, you know, especially around the commercial areas, like around Sunset, around Stephanie. There's going to be things that happen, but in general, in the neighborhoods, it definitely feels a lot safer. So if safety is important to you, I definitely think you should consider Henderson. The 
The next pro is going to be the shopping and dining options. As I said, Henderson is a city and it is a separate city to Las Vegas, but you're not going to miss out on any action in, in that sense, so to speak. There's so many great shopping and dining options and some great local casinos here as well if you want to go and get your local casino fix. In terms of shopping, we have the district, which is a great outdoor shopping area located in Green Valley Ranch. And if you move to Green Valley Ranch, then most of the communities there are walkable to the district. Some great stores, some great restaurants there as well. Definitely a great place to go and just to go and walk, grab a coffee, walk and people watch as well. Always looks good during the holiday season, which is when we're shooting now. Also, they really do a good uh, trunk or treat at Halloween. We always go every year, get lots of candy, probably too much candy for the kids. I mean, they get a lot of candy at that place, that's for sure. Um, and, you know, just again, supported by the local businesses, which is always great to see. Across the other side of Henderson, then we have the Galleria Mall. Galleria Mall, I think, is one of the largest indoor malls in the whole of Nevada, certainly in the southern Nevada area. Great mall. I actually used to be a store manager in the Starbucks there. Really great store to work in. Great people that work in that mall as well. There's a, a Dillard's, there's a Macy's, there's some really great restaurants. There's a great uh, Korean barbecue there as well. There's um, uh, Wally Wombats, which is always great for the kids as well. Our kids love going to Wally Wombats and it's, it's humongous. You've got the mall and then you've got loads of stuff on the outside of that as well. You've got Costco, two Costco's in Henderson. So you've got one on Mark Street, one on St. Rose Parkway. So depending on where you are in Henderson, you're not going to probably be more than 10 minutes, I'd say, to a Costco, which is, I know Costco is important. We also have Sam's Club for those Sam's fans. There's a Sam's Club as well, not too far away. Probably more located towards uh, Silverado Ranch, but definitely not too far away as well. We also have in Henderson, we have FLM Chocolate Factory, which is always great to go and have a look. They have a free cactus garden to walk around as well, which is gorgeous. We also have, in terms of casinos, we have Green Valley Ranch, which again is located at the district. Really nice casino, great movie theater in there as well. And then we have Sunset Casino over by the Galleria Mall. So that's gonna be your different shopping, dining options. Across uh, Stephanie, Sunset, you're gonna have loads of different, you know, your targets, your big box stores. There's gonna be some normal restaurants there as well like Applebee's um, which we always go and visit um, so definitely some great shopping and dining options is what I want to say so if you're th worried about that and thinking oh my god I'm going to move to Henderson but there's going to be nothing there I'd say on the contrary there's loads of stuff and there's more stuff as Henderson is growing there's more stuff being added as well another pro on Henderson and this is going to appeal to you if you are moving with school age children is going to be the schools the the schools in henderson the clark county school district gets a really bad rating and when i was doing my research i was looking at it and i was thinking oh my goodness it's ranked 49 out of 50 school districts there was only one school district worse which i believe was in hawaii um it might have changed now but when i was doing my research it was ranked as literally the worst but one I was thinking, how bad are the schools here? Like, what are we doing with the kids? Are we going to have to put them in private school? Are we going to have to homeschool five kids? Um, actually, when you do your real due diligence and you take a real deep dive into it, then you actually see there are some really good schools in the area, and especially in Henderson, in Summerlin, and in Boulder City. If you were to take those schools out, uh, those cities or those places out, Actually, the school districts for them individually would rank really highly. It's just there's some really bad schools in other parts of Las Vegas that really bring the average down. Green Valley has Green Valley High School, which is one of the best high schools in the whole of the Las Vegas area. We also have Coronado High School, which is another amazing high school that will be closer to the Anthem sort of area. We have Dal Webb Middle School, which I believe is one of the best middle schools in the whole of the area. That's in Henderson. We have a variety of different elementary schools. We've got Ellis Elementary up in Inspirada. We've got Lamping Elementary. We've got, uh, we've got Nate Mack Elementary as well. We've got so many different elementary schools that if you were to go on greatschools.org, and this is what I always advise, if you go on greatschools.org, have a look at the schools in Henderson, see where they are ranked, depending on what you're looking for. We were looking for elementary when we first moved here, but... We try to make sure that we're going to be okay for middle and high school as well. And then if you look at the Clark County School District and make sure the zoning's there as well. And if you want further 
information then go on niche.com as well and see what's being said on there then you'll start to build your own picture and realize actually peter's right the schools in henderson are not that bad i've had people move to this area and have their kids in public school and say the same thing like peter you're right the schools here are amazing my, my kids are thriving and that's the, that's the truth of it there are some really good schools in henderson there's also some really good charter schools so if you want to go the charter school route there's a coral uh, charter school there's Pinecrest as well they're two of the best ones so absolutely if you want to enter that lottery when you do move here then you can always do them stem based education as well so if your children are more along that sort of science technology sort of area then definitely there's some great stem based charter schools and obviously some great public schools all across the whole of the Las Vegas Valley and also there's a really good homeschooling community here as well one of our neighbors used to homeschool their kid when he was in middle school and he was showing me some of the support systems here it's amazing we we're actually thinking of homeschooling our youngest when she goes to school just to, to have that as an option or, or maybe it's because we don't want her to, to leave home I don't know maybe we'll ask mum what, what the reason is behind there but we're actually thinking of homeschooling our youngest because there's a great community here to really help there's some great Facebook groups some great online communities and there are some great meetups where you know, it counts towards some of your scores where you go and do like a, a little trip and you can go and cross that off as well. So all in all, what I'm trying to say, if you're moving to Henderson with school age kids, I think you're going to be OK here. Another pro about living in Henderson, and it's something that I actually didn't realize or probably appreciate maybe until I actually moved here, is the amount of outdoor recreation there is to do. Our kids get involved in quite a lot of outdoor recreation, but there's about 60 to 70 parks within Henderson. All those parks have different playgrounds, splash pads, sports fields, whether that's soccer, whether that's baseball, whether that's uh, football, whether that's basketball, tennis courts, volleyball courts, pickleball courts. Pickleball is becoming a real popular thing now, so a lot of places have um, maybe cut down on tennis courts and added some pickleball courts. Great though, because all ages can just pick up pickleball and, and start playing it. I think it's great to, to see different generations all mixing together playing sport. It's definitely really good. And, you know, I, th I think that can add a few years onto your life as well. So I definitely love to see it. And then aside from the parks, which are also got some really good trails, great for cycling or walking. We've got some great dog parks as well. So we're a very dog friendly city. So if you've got dogs, plenty of spaces to go and walk them. Some communities have a dog park for small dogs and then a separate one for the bigger dogs so they're not constantly mixing as well, which is also good. And then aside from those, we also have, you got Lake Las Vegas to go and do some outdoor things. You got Lake Mead. Yes, the water is a bit lower than we would like, but you can still go and do some great activities on there as well. Mount Charleston is probably about an hour away, depending on where you are in Henderson, which is great. Some great snow up there and Lee Canyon as well. There's some great snow if you want to go. And, yes, we do get snow here. If you want to go and snowboard or whatever down in the snow, you can go and do that as well. We've got Carabunga Bay Water Park here in Henderson, which is a great water park to go and check out. Great way to cool down as well from, from the Vegas heat. We always get a season pass. We try to go four times a year. Uh, during the summer especially it's always great get there a little bit early before the sun really gets up and it gets too busy our kids now are getting a bit older they love to go on some of the bigger slides which is you know a world away from when they were too scared to go on some of the slides in the kiddies pool it's definitely great to see them being more adventurous for sure and it's just as i said you know we get 300 days of sunshine we get average temperatures of 80 degrees so it's great that there's so many ways to go and enjoy those weather and you know something in the uk and Maybe on the East Coast, you can emphasize as well where you don't get those great days where you can go out and enjoy the outdoors. Or if you do, you need to be wrapped up really warm and have waterproofs on because it's going to be raining. We don't really suffer from that here. So it's great to have those options to enjoy the outdoor things. And we definitely make use of it as a family, that's for sure. And then the final pro, and it's, it's something that, you know, probably is obvious for a lot of you, but I always mention it just in case for some reason people weren't aware of it, but... In Nevada, there's no state income tax, and we're one of only nine states that offer that. You know, if you think of California or New York or New Jersey or Oregon, places that have really high state income tax, that could be a huge save. And if you can stay in the same job and work remotely, say, and still pick up your same paycheck or similar paycheck to what you were getting, if you can still pick up that living in here, living in Vegas, living in Henderson, 
that's amazing. I mean, I certainly, this time of year when I'm preparing for tax season, I definitely love skipping the, the state uh, state income tax part because that would be another, could be another 10% off my, my top line taken. So definitely no state income tax here is a big benefit. And it's what brings a lot of people here. I mean, your quality of life will definitely go up if finances are a thing for you. And if you're living paycheck to paycheck in another state and maybe moving here maybe can change that for you, then it gives you more disposable income. Maybe you can go take an extra vacation. Maybe you can start investing in things with that extra money you're going to save. And it does add up over time. And it does bring a lot of people here and to the other eight states that offer no state income tax. We have a high sales tax and that's where it does counteract. And obviously we have a lot of tourists coming into the local casinos. And that's where a lot of our state tax comes from is the, the sales tax. But to have no state income tax is amazing. Also, our property taxes are amongst the lowest in the country as well. So couple that all in, you'll be quite saving quite a lot in terms of tax here. And as I said, that brings a lot of people, a lot of the people that have contacted me and reached out to me to move here, a lot of them, even if that isn't their main reason, a lot of them are moving from places that have a high state income tax. So definitely, I think it's only right to highlight that as a positive. So onto the cons now, and one of the, the cons is, for me, the HOA and HOA communities. And for some people, that's a positive. For some of you, I know you dread HOAs and HOA communities, and I can totally understand why. Some of the HOA fees can be ridiculous as well. Some of them are upwards of two, three, four hundred when you couple in the master plan fee and a sub-association fee. Places like Anthem Country Club or Lake Las Vegas or McDonald's Highlands are going to have really high... HOA fees, so just be prepared for that. But they do offer good amenities and they do offer you know a nice place to live. Sometimes HOAs though can be really in your business and really on top of everything that you're doing and really questioning everything that you're doing. And you need to make sure you read your CCNRs, making sure that you're on top of what's on there, especially when you're purchasing a home within a HOA community, you'll get a copy of the CCNRs and that way you'll be able to review it before you purchase the property. And after you've received that, you get five days to pull out if there's anything in there that you don't agree with. But make sure you're, you're keeping on top of that. Even after you're, after you're living in the home, make sure you're on top of that because they can try and change things and uh, add things and do things and, and question things. And if it's not in there, then they don't really have a right to. Um, I know some HOA communities have started to get a bit picky on parking now and in where you can park and where you can't park. If you've got a garage, it has to be in your garage and some of the townhome communities are maybe struggling a little bit with that. And some of these HOAs can be quite bully, some. Um, I think some of them have left a bad taste because there's some amazing HOAs and some really good HOAs. You just need to make sure that you're reading everything and you're fully informed of everything and there are benefits to a HOA. All HOAs are not bad and all HOAs are not created equally. There are some, some benefits and they are the, the whole premise of a HOA is really to protect the property values within the community. So in that sense, if you're buying a home in a HOA, then you should be thinking, well, at least the values are going to be protected. It's not going to be like a, a non-HOA community. And if you've ever drove through a non-HOA community here in the valley, then you'll understand what I mean. Sometimes you'll see homes painted ridiculous colors, you'll see multiple broken down cars down in the street, driveways full of trash. You won't get that in a HOA community and that obviously would bring down the value of the property because if someone's looking at a home in that street, they'll be like, what is this neighborhood? So there are some benefits, but you just need to make sure that you're fully informed. And again, you can always reach out to me and we can always review it together for you as well. The next con is going to be something I didn't really think about before I moved here, but it definitely has been something I've thought about since then, and that's the hard water. Our water here in Henderson and in Nevada in general is rated as probably the second hardest in the whole of the country. Not too sure who number one is. I'll have to check that one out and get back to you, but I feel sorry for them because the water here is definitely very hard. It's not a great title to have. You know, we've got the second safest largest city in the whole of the US, but then the second hardest water it's to do with the buildup of minerals and everything within the water. It's not saying it's unsafe to drink, although I probably wouldn't drink from the faucets here. I know my kids have been sick from drinking from the water, but hey, that's not any medical advice. That's just from what happened to my kids. 
but what it does do is it, it can really damage your piping and your fixtures within your home it can build a, a, a over time it can um, you can develop blockages within your piping as well and obviously plumbing can be quite expensive also you're going to have maybe a limey uh, sort of build up on your um, shower head and on your faucets as well and it's just not nice when you're washing your clothes your clothes can sometimes come out a bit dull as well my wife's hair used to be more frizzy from the hot water uh, the hard water sorry and there are ways around it you can get a water softener and you know maybe best part of about 2000 to get the softener to get it installed if you don't have the connection already and then you just need to top that up with salt or pellets and then it's going to be okay as well that's what we did we have a water softener here but before that it was definitely not so nice um so definitely be aware of the hard water and then be you know mindful of what you can do to um, protect that a lot of new homes a lot of the new construction homes they will already come with a loop so all you need to do is go to home depot or lowe's and just buy a water softener and they'll come out and fit it for you and it's a lot easier than maybe some of the older homes that don't already have that loop that need to have it installed uh, on their piping system but once you've got it you'll never go back another con is going to be the hot summers we also do get quite chilly winters although probably not as chilly as some places so i'm not going to uh, infuriate some of you by by saying that our winters are too cold but definitely our hot summers you know we can sometimes in july and august we can hit 115 120 on a daily basis and it's almost a celebration when the temperatures do come down below triple digits. It's not a humid heat, so you're not going to feel that stickiness that you would feel in a humid area like Texas or Florida. It's a dry heat, and that can be a problem as well. I know when I first moved here, again, if you've heard this story already, I apologize, but when I first moved here, uh, it was um, my first summer here, and I didn't drink enough water because I wasn't feeling like I was hot. I wasn't feeling like sweating like I would if I was in a humid area. So I didn't drink enough water, ended up with kidney stones, which was the worst pain ever in my whole entire life. Um, thankfully, though, I drink a lot more water now, especially in summertime, because I do not want to go through that pain again. I thought something was going to burst inside me. I actually I said to my wife, I, I believe my appendix are going to burst and I need an ambulance, even though we lived across the street from a hospital. She didn't get me an ambulance. She only ordered me an Uber. So, yeah, I know. Uh, maybe I was a bit of a wimp. She wanted me to walk. There was no way I was going to walk. Uh, but I digress. The, the temperatures here do get really hot in the summer. And it is great that we have all those outdoor things to enjoy. But you need to make sure that you are doing them at a time where it's going to be you know, able to enjoy them. July and August gets very, very hard to be outside. Yes, your home has AC, which is going to put your bills up. Your car will have AC, your place of work will have AC, all of the stores you go to will have AC. But if you want to go out store, outside and be in your backyard or if you want to go outside and play sports with the kids, it's going to be a bit harder to do that in the summer months, especially in the afternoon when it gets very hot. And also if you have pets as well, obviously just be mindful when you're walking them during the, the summer months, especially the sidewalk and even the grass can get very hot for them poor paws. So just make sure we're looking after our pets as well. But it definitely is a con, you know, and obviously with that heat, some health issues can be triggered as well. So maybe just check that out as well before you move here. I've come accustomed to it now. It doesn't bother me as much as it used to. I still get sunburn. I still end up looking like Sebastian from Little Mermaid and red all over my arms and legs from the sun, even though I do try and put enough sun cream on. And that's the only drawback for me being fair skinned. Um, but other than that, I'm used to it. It doesn't affect me as much as my first year or two. It's just, you know, you, you're prepared for it. And I'd rather have the hot summers and being ready and knowing how to prepare for it rather than somewhere where there's natural disasters all the time that can come out of nowhere. So it is a con, but in some ways it can also be a pro as well. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you think about the weather. And then the final con is going to be the cost of living. The cost of living in Henderson is slightly higher than the cost of living in Las Vegas. And it is higher than the average in the whole of the US. The average home purchase price at the moment in Henderson is around about 500, 515,000 maybe for a single family home. 
average rent on a probably a three bedroom home is going to be close to maybe 1800 to 2000 a month so that gives you sort of an idea of you know the, the basic needs which is your your home your shelter obviously you can adjust that in terms of sizes but if we're working on averages the average household income in henderson is around about 80 to 90 thousand a year um, so again you can sort of work that out as well your utilities it's going to vary depending on the size of your your home your usage if you have a pool how, how much you're going to have be running your ac if you're going to be working from home then obviously your ac will probably be on all the time but i'd say budget between anywhere it's gonna be a big big range probably from about 300 to maybe about a thousand a month that'll sort of give you a rough idea it could be slightly more than that again depending on you know if you've got a pool as well and you need to have the, the filter and the pump going all the time, then that's definitely going to add to your utility costs. The internet here can be quite expensive as well. Cox sort of have a monopoly, although there's a few players now that are starting to compete with them. But Cox Internet, although is fairly reliable, we use Cox Internet, their prices can be quite high. So definitely check into internet providers in Henderson. But when you couple that in with the other side of it, in terms of no state income tax, I think it probably you know, isn't as expensive in terms of cost of living as terms of other places. I have done a video on the cost of living in Henderson, so I'll pop that up there so you can click on that as well if you like and you get a more of a deeper dive into the cost of living. Maybe I should do an updated one for the coming year. Um, I'll have it all, all prepared, so I'll definitely stick a new one up um, in the next few months. But until then, there is one up there that the information is still valid, so check that out if cost of living is a thing for you. And then if you want more details as well, just again, reach out to me. You can give me a call, send me a text, send me an email, however you're comfortable, whenever you're ready. All my details are there and we can discuss the cost of living again in more detail or any other questions you have as well at any other time. You know, I'm happy to help you in any way that I can and I'd love to be a part of you moving here 100%. So if I can help, just let me know. And that's it guys, that's the pros and cons of living in Henderson, Nevada. Overall, I think it's a great place to live. I love living in Henderson and we're looking at moving in Henderson, but we want to stay in Henderson. We absolutely love it. There are some cons, but I don't think the cons are deal breakers for me. That might be for you and I totally understand that. Let me know what you thought about these in the comments below and if these are deal breakers or deal makers for you, then I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to hear where you're actually potentially moving from because a lot of the people I'm Speaking to, obviously, California is a big one. I've had a lot of people moving from Oregon, Texas, Florida. So it'd be great to hear where you're potentially moving from as well. Just one final reminder as well, guys, to if you haven't already, to like the video and tap on that subscribe as well to really help me get to 1,000 subscribers. Also, a reminder, if you are thinking of moving to Henderson or Las Vegas, then you can get in touch with me anytime, anytime at all. I'd love to help you out. If you've enjoyed this video, there's going to be some more videos popping up right here that are going to be very similar that I'd love you to check out as well. But until the next time, thank you for watching. You take care.